It's getting cold. We should rest soon. Agreed. You're lucky you've got that tiny hot spot prepared. You never mentioned this before. Didn't I? Well, here it is. Oh, that's really nice. Small but beautiful. So many curtains. Who's that blonde elf on the wall above that bed? Oh, <laughs> that's Corta, Drake's girlfriend, my barbarian dragonborn friend. I drew a picture of her for him since he missed her a lot while she wasn't with us on our adventures at first. Oh, and don't touch that bed, it was their spot. Oh, now I get why this room has so many curtains. What about this mattress on the floor? And the drawing of... Uh... Is that poo? <laughs> oh, that's Mildir's bed. The rogue. He's a dear friend, even if he can be a bit of a... handful? <laughs> Is that a hibiscus? Another friend of yours, I presume? Siona. <sighs> Is he the reason you turned down Darin? You know, he seemed quite fond of you. <clears throat> he is. Why Hibiscus though? Well, his name is Exceed. Exceed Hibiscus. At least that's the name he gave us when we first met him. He is a tiefling monk. A monk. And those flowers. Is something wrong? You know, I had a monk in my life too. Her name was May. Tell me more about her. She smelled of cherry blossoms in spring. When she moves, every part of her emits a scorching light. As bright as the sun, she's the one who kept me away from the shadows for a long time. I hope she's still alive. I really miss her. You know what? May and Exceed would have gotten along well, I think. Hmm. Is she hot? <laughs> she was. She is. Well, keep her away from my realm then. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't think she's into men anyway, so... What are those notes above your bed? Is that your own composition? Yes, it's a score I'm writing, an orchestral piece. Are you organizing a concert or something? <laughs> something like that. It's a magical piece, a spell of sorts. I'm working on something that I hope will be transformative when I return to Gritania. It will be our salvation, our collective strength. A magic spell? You created a magic spell? <laughs> Don't get too excited, it's not done yet. But I'm trying. You know... All spells are about music, vibrations, sounds. You just need to find the right key. Did you write it yourself? I had a little guidance from my second master, Lucius. He's a top-tier bard, even though he doesn't speak like one. Let's say that if I was a warlock, he would be my patron. But worry not, I am not. <laughs> a warlock. Sorry, um, did I hit a spot? No, no. We used to have a warlock in our party. He was unique. What was his name? Far. Far was his name. Anyway, Lovette, that's wonderful. You know, I have another friend. His name is Echo, who would be really amazed and curious about the spell of yours. He's a wizard, a really powerful one. Really? Is he the one who is in a coma, keeping the concentration of this spell he did to bring you back? Yes. Oof, he sounds like a strong-willed and powerful man. A deep gnome, actually. You know, he was also a victim of slavery. Mm. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up. It's fine. You know that I admire you. You're inspiring and strong. No, I am not. If I was, I would still be with them. I know you miss them, but that doesn't change the fact that you're strong. 
May always told me that our strength comes from within. No matter how small or big you are, our strength and wisdom are gleaned from the four elements of nature. And if we find balance, then it will be unstoppable. She was the keeper of valor after all. I trust her words. Keeper of valor? Hmm, that's familiar. <gasps> I read about it in Candle Keep. There was a temple guarded by an ancient dragon named Valor. The dragon's essence was stored in a gem that was later stolen. When the crystal was removed, it shattered and all magic vanished. This was a threat to the monks because they drew power from the four elements through the gem. However, one monk couldn't control the elements and remained unaffected by the gem's power. They believe that Valor took human form, lost his memories and is wandering the world. This monk was assigned to find and bring him back to the temple. Was that May? What what happened next? Oh, I stopped reading. We happened to find a D&D book, remember? Is May the keeper of Valor for real? Yes! Yes, she is! Oh my, that's so awesome! Wait! I knew I saw it! Here! The Temple of Valor in the city of Aragorn. Well, this means we delay our journey for a couple of days, but if that would make you happy, I am okay with going. Of it, yes. Please, please, let's go. I need to know. Okay, okay, no cries. It's decided. A temple of monks, huh? Well, it's been a while. Maybe they can share their wisdom with us and some good stories too. Maybe meditate a bit and train a bit more before I return. <laughs> Thanks, Lovette. I'm really glad I met you. <laughs> to be honest, Leafy, I am the one who got lucky by meeting you. You're a euphonic note in all this mess. So thank you. Anyway, enough with this. Nobody loves a whiny person, right? What do you think we decorate your bed? Maybe we can add some leaves and vines? <gasps> Guys will be so thrilled when they see it. Welcome back to another episode of the BND Podcast. Today we're diving into the magical world of Dungeons and Dragons to explore something really special, the bonds that form between characters in the game. In D&D, it's not just about rolling dice and battling monsters, it's also about the relationships that grow between our characters. Have you ever wondered how all this affects the story we create together? Well, that's what we're here to unravel today. We'll talk about why these connections between characters are so important for our gameplay. After all, it's all about how these bonds spice up our adventures, making the journey even more thrilling than it already is. So, join us as we share tales and discuss the magic that happens when characters in our D&D party become more than just adventurers, they become lifelong companions on an epic journey. First question, Val, and it is for you. What techniques or strategies do you use to establish a sense of camaraderie or conflict between characters without disturbing the game's flow? I'd say uh, that sometimes it is extremely hard to find time for this kind of role-playing, which I hate, but obviously is something that can happen. Mm -hmm. Specifically, the one that you want to open up and pour your heart out to another character. So definitely establishing a system or a pattern that works for you and your group is essential. For example, try and talk things through and plan your next move while you're walking to your next destination. Or, before you know you might trigger a fight is an easy way of not losing the role-playing effect because you're still talking to each other but also try and keep it short and not waste time from the fun part of rolling dice and killing dragons or maybe trying to ride them, I yes. don't know. Yes, <laughs> when you all go to camp, that's when you can trigger a steamy cat scene, maybe, or make a dramatic revelation of your past that haunts you still to this day. It's usually easier and you also give the DM some alone time to rest their head a bit from all the overthinking and sit back and sip their tea 
at watching things unfolding. Personally, I don't think I follow any specific techniques, to be honest, when it comes to establishing a sense of camaraderie on, or conflict. I just go with the flow and wait for the DM's approval and my player's encouragement, maybe, so I can spill the beans and be as dramatic as I want for a bit. What do you think, though, Zephy? Mm, we love the drama. Oh, and dude. bonding also takes time and a lot of role-playing, which can be a little time consuming indeed that's why i personally choose to do this kind of rp during long rests long rests can give you a break and a breath to spend time with your group and get closer to them without taking time from a fight or a plan or anything else of course there will be moments during a battle that another player may do or say something that will be emotional and give a plus to your bonding but you know something small you can just talk about your childhood trauma during a phase like this, of course. Now, about the establishment of camaraderie or conflict. I think characters should be encouraged to share common objectives or goals. A common purpose always helps. Also, small interactions, like brief conversations or gestures during downtime to hinder relationship or conflict, a shared joke, a friendly Rivalry or a moment of disagreement can add depth without taking up too much game time. Background details are also super important, along with the collaborative problem solving. And all these and more can add depth to the relationships between the characters and the characters themselves. But let me ask you something that has to do with this. Do you find it essential to develop relationships between your character and others in the party? And how does it influence your gameplay experience? Hmm. To be completely honest with you, I always have, unfortunately, <laughs> an anticipation <laughs> of developing either a relationship or even a friendship every time I start a new campaign with a new character, but it's not exactly an expectation of mine. It's mostly the excitement I have in me that drives me to try and get to know the characters of the group better. I always try to be subtle with this. Um, because most of the time, thankfully, I choose to roleplay shy characters anyway. But I do feel that creating a bond with your teammates will make the game experience wonderful and more real in a way. For example, saving someone during a fight when they're down and you're the only one who can heal them and bring them back to life creates an intense dramatic effect in the game that is exhilarating to me. I would never force it though. Um, sometimes people get along so well in real life that makes it so much easier to become closer in character too but sometimes people can surprise you in a way you'd never expect it mm -hmm. and also from a dm's perspective you can easily manipulate your pl your players uh, to do things by keeping that in mind literally navigate them towards where you want them to go in a way when they're so close to their teammates when you know that sacrifice anything or anyone to protect their friends the whole thing becomes dangerous in a way for players, but it does add so much flavor to the whole experience. I want to hear your opinion about this, so Zephy. Well, it's definitely one of the main reasons I love D&D. I love to interact with the world and the people in it. I love to interact even more with my fellow players, and I want to know their backstories, their RP, their flaws, their development. I am beyond excited when this happens. I don't want to know anything anything about your character outside of the game even though i probably think about it 24 7 but i want to know everything during the rp and trust me when i say that once something important for your character happens i am like a child in a candy store i get way too excited well people who know me also know that excitement and hype is a passive for me to be honest but Anyway, you know what I'm saying. You definitely do. <laughs> you get invested more into other people's characters' arcs than your own sometimes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you, though, how do you navigate character conflicts or differences within the party to ensure they contribute positively to the storyline and character development? Um, Handling disagreements between characters in a party is about making sure everyone has fun without any real fights between us as players. We talk a lot and make sure everyone feels okay with what's happening in the game. And when our characters argue, it's like telling a cool story. Sometimes the arguments help our characters grow and change. Our DM helps, uh, you know, make this fights part of the story so they feel real and interesting. 
If something doesn't feel right, you need to stop and make sure everyone is okay with it. Playing D&D means everyone has a good time. We try to make our characters work together, even if they don't always agree. That way, our story becomes more exciting. What do you think? I completely agree. Um, it is extremely vital to make sure that everyone feels comfortable during the sessions. As a DM, I have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to this, but I always try to lighten up the mood by pointing out something else and distract my players with something nice instead if it gets to the point that people are um, getting agitated in real life. Mm -hmm. As a player, I always try to make sure that everyone's feeling okay. And even if there is an in-game conflict, I think it's easy to say that our characters will sort it out themselves naturally. Um, sometimes players and their characters will have different opinions and this might cause an argument in real life too. But unless you're a chaotic, evil person, there's no point in causing chaos and upsetting someone just for fun. But even if you try to roleplay an evil character, always try to do it in a respectful way towards the other person so the DM can use it as a part of a growth moment, like exactly like you said. Don't say the, that's what my character would do. No. <laughs> no, no, we don't accept this. No, don't <laughs> cause problems. <laughs> Don't create unnecessary problems with your party, actually. Or unnecessary drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Um, another question. Do you believe that strong bonds between characters are necessary for a successful D&D campaign? Why or why not? Trying to think back on all the campaigns I was a part of, I'd say the most successful ones for me were the ones that I felt loved, seen, understood, heartbroken by another player. The ones that make me feel something, you know, like feeling betrayed by your friend who decided to turn on you to gain power or being protected and feeling like you're part of a group or even better part of a family. These are the kind of memories you tend to never forget. This is also what makes this game so special for people, I think, because it makes you feel things that you might have forgotten that you can even feel. It makes you experience all kinds of emotions and express yourself in a creative way. How is that not the most successful thing in the whole world? You said it all so well. I don't have anything to add on this. <laughs> and it might sound crazy for you people who may not have played D&D yet, but it's true. It's like watching a TV series or a movie and you burst into tears because you felt emotional or laughed because it was funny. And now multiply that 10 times more because you are the one who makes the decisions. You are the protagonist of the story and you relate to the character you have created, and you, usually, <laughs> want the best for them, even if you gave them the most tragic backstory that was ever written. <laughs> <laughs> Edge lords, we love to hate them, and hate that we love them, <laughs> but please, enough orphans, please. <laughs> <laughs> enough orphan rogues. <laughs> please, and uh, elves as well. <laughs> and elves, yeah, yeah, that's the basic, the starter pack of d, &D. <laughs> Anyway, tell me now, um, what elements or aspects of character relationships do you find most captivating or enjoyable in a D&D &D campaign? Okay, just picture this. Characters who start off as complete strangers, gradually building trust and friendship as they face challenges together. That growth is gold. It's not just about smooth sailing. It's what we have just discussed. When characters clash, argue, and then find a way to patch things up, that really hooks me. It adds layers to the relationships, you know? And come on, the surprising friendships or relationships that form between characters, when you least expect it. It's like fireworks in the story, keeps things spicy. But what really gets me? When characters, each with their own goals, put their differences aside to team up for a common cause. That unity, despite diverse backgrounds, that's magic. I even find it magical when someone decides to betray the rest of their group for his or her own goals. Preferably at the end of the campaign, we don't want to make things awkward in the middle, and difficult too. And don't even get me started on those heart-to-heart -heart moments between characters, sharing vulnerabilities or supporting each other in tough times. Please give me more. What's fascinating is how these relationships ripple through the storyline, sometimes causing unexpected twists or adding depth to the narrative. And that's what makes characters' dynamics an absolute thrill in a D&D &D campaign. But what do you think? 
I think you literally covered everything with what you said already. <laughs> we complete but, each other today. <laughs> uh, it's true. <laughs> but these fireworks are hard to forget, aren't they? Mm -hmm. At the moment, you're just role-playing with another player during a dramatic heart-to-heart -heart scene, like you said. Even if it's pleasant, even if it's not, you actually connect with them on a higher level. It almost feels spiritual. Whatever your character feels, you feel, your thoughts and emotions are intertwined with your character's thoughts and emotions, the way you share them towards the other player and their character. Some people don't realize it. It's not as shallow and significant as they think. It's a form of therapy in a way you're expressing yourself through someone else's eyes. It is truly a magnificent thing to see and experience. For people, especially who struggle with being social, Making friends is such a difficult task, but when you get a, a glimpse of how easy it is to form a friendship with a character, how effortlessly you can just be accepted in a group by just being yourself, but not exactly yourself in a way, mm -hmm. it makes you think that maybe making friends is more painless than you ever thought it was. But um, I think I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> Because I'm starting to get emotional and you did cover all the aspects with both of already. I just needed to yeah. be dramatic for a second. Sorry about that. Okay, you did it. I I am emotional now too. Thank you, Val. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Have you ever encountered challenges in establishing meaningful connections between characters? And if so, how did you overcome them? I can't really think of a time that I couldn't form a connection between my character and any of the characters I've encountered. Even if that connection was an unpleasant one, um, it still was a connection. That's how I like to see it. <laughs> Conflict, yes. Drama, yes. With players and their characters, been there, done that. And yes, this can be challenging sometimes, but it was never in a harmful or disrespectful way. It's only normal to clash with people that you don't agree with. But that doesn't mean that you absolutely hate their whole existence and you can't treat them respectfully while you're playing. We are adults after all, right? Right. I am grateful though for making so many friends in and out of game thanks to D&D. &D. And it's all because of that role-playing aspect and the bonds and connections you form with each other's characters. But what about you, Zephy? What do you think? I don't think I have ever encountered any challenges uh, too. Everyone loves to talk about their characters and play as them, and I love giving them my attention and getting to know them, so it happens very smoothly. From the player's perspective, characters are totally different. They may not trust each other or even like each other at the beginning, but that always changes during the campaign. It's great to see how these things can change during campaign, indeed. That's so fascinating. People earning your trust or breaking mm. it. <laughs> We've seen it both. Choose your death. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, um, how do you balance personal character arcs and growth with the need for cohesive and collaborative storytelling among, among the party? Uh, I think it is, it is very important to talk about our character's goals. This helps us fit our stories together without one being more important. Also, finding ways the stories connect, but don't take over the main one. Each of us gets a turn to shine. We make sure our goals match the group's goals. That way everyone growing uh, helps the big story. We help each other too. Supporting each other's stories make us all better. And we work with our DM to make sure our stories all fit together well. It's about making sure everyone's story adds to the fun without getting in the way. Then talking, teamwork, fitting our stories together make the game exciting for everyone. And last, but definitely not least, trust your DM. He probably knows exactly when to give you your time to shine. Just take the opportunity and roll with it. What are your thoughts? I do think that the last part you talked about is actually the most crucial. Some DMs, for their own personal reasons, sometimes focus on the story and forget that the characters are actually part of it. But I really don't mean it in a disrespectful way. Most of the time it's easier and it doesn't overcomplicate things when you have a base story and everyone is just interacting with it instead of connecting all the bits and bobs from everyone's backstory into the pre-existing story. That's true. There are many great DMs that don't choose to include backstories into their campaigns. 
And that's why I think it's important to discuss it before starting the game. Maybe some players may want different things. And don't compromise. A campaign may take years to finish, if it ever finishes. <laughs> so, play something that you mostly enjoy. And that also goes for the DMs too. If you don't feel like putting the backstories into your game, then don't. Don't push yourself. We know how demanding this one can be. Trust me, it's so hard, so time-consuming, and it can get really confusing. But if it works, and all the dots connect eventually, it can become the most amazing thing. I do feel like trusting your DM with at least a small part of your backstory, not 500 pages, Zephy. <gasps> I'm exposed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> guilty. I'm guilty too. <laughs> it we, is good. We go together on this. <laughs> So yeah, just a small part of your backstory, uh, trusting that to your DM is good for them to have a better knowledge of who you are and how they can use this to their advantage, basically. Mm -hmm. And sharing your goals with your party is also vital, but sometimes you just want to be a grumpy, mysterious edgelord who doesn't want to talk about their goals or past, and it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Again... For me, there's no pattern. I don't know if I actually even know how to balance this. I don't think I consciously try to keep my mouth shut or open it and talk about my personal arc. It just happens organically. But I, I do know that I always love to hear and see people's personal arcs unfold. I try to encourage them to follow them and help them out in any way I can. And I do think everyone else would have done the same for me. And most of the time they do. So that's good, I guess. Talking about bondings, though, I love the bonding moment that Labed and Siona had in today's kit. It was a good start. <laughs> of course, there are a lot more things that sh they should learn about each other. But they're getting closer, forming a good friendship. And in the end, it's not about the dragons you killed, but the people you shared the kill with. So, bond with your fellow adventurers, get to know them, and let them know you. Love them, protect them, lie to them, deceive them, <laughs> <laughs> create content, and create a beautiful and meaningful story. That's right. And I'm extremely proud of Siona, first of all, for being able to open up slowly but steadily, and the fact that she trusts Lovette to even talk to her about her past. I love seeing them evolving and becoming friends and i'm excited to see what's next for them you guys have no idea <laughs> of what's coming next <laughs> uh oh it's coming and we are so hyped about this <laughs> truly <laughs> so i think we should probably wrap it up here thank you guys for listening to us once again until next time may all your roles be a natural 20 bye bye, -bye.